No, because I feel like there's very few guys who go out and make statements and lead the, the sport gracefully. This is a very dangerous sport. He's done all he, he can do inside the sport. So if he were to have one more fight or even retire now, he's done everything he needs to do. And I'll support him. So how does care that you overcame? Why still step into the ring knowing that I'm going now. Like you said, man, it's dangerous. Because I didn't accomplish my ultimate goal, you know, and the fact that I've had so many challenges outside the ring to come back. I wanted to make sure at least if I was to go out, it wasn't going to be on the doctor's term, it was going to be on my terms. As an individual, obviously the best scared of overcoming that was, was the biggest goal as an individual, but what could top that in your professional career as a boxer? A win over Triple G. That would top everything. I think it would give me the superstardom that when you first start out boxing, that's what you want, that's what you dream about. And it's right here, it's at the cusp, and I'm looking forward to tackling it. Thank you, Jacob. Thank you, boss. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I was talking to somebody real quick. Happened? I'm getting ready to head to the info because they don't want me to get Okay, all right, all right. That's so, cool. all the traffic, right? We can't, yeah. So, what are we doing? No, y'all gonna go eat someplace here. Who is taking us? Yeah. Who's taking us? We're gonna, we're gonna share the car, gonna come back. The car gonna take him. So, we're gonna go back ahead or what? No, we're gonna eat somewhere right okay, here. Cool. Like, all right, all right. So, the car will be back. All right, Dre. All right, I'll call you tonight. Okay. When I get back, it's gonna be late, but. All right, cool. I'll all see right. you, Dre. Be careful. Yeah, yeah. One, two. Now, thank you. Thank you. Now, Daniel, I, uh, I literally just did an interview upstairs, okay. and, and I was telling him that. You understand the process of winning. Yeah. And I, I was explaining to people say, oh, he doesn't have a chance, eight to nine, one, yeah. underdog. I says, when you've been on your deathbed and you go to chemotherapy, you understand the process of life. Absolutely. Can you speak to, talk about if, if, if you have to box to win, if you got to fight to win, if you got to brawl inside, can you speak to the boxing fans and tell them about the process? Well, see, I remember, I remember being in a wheelchair, rolling myself up and down the hospital hallways, and the hardest part, in my opinion, about the recovery that I had was learning how to walk again. It was so painful, it was so challenging. And I just remember every day just pushing myself no matter what it took to get back so that I can have a healthy lifestyle, have a, have a normal life. But those challenges, it scope your mentality. Those challenges, it, 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 it channels your inner, uh, 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 your inner self. And you find out who you truly are when your back is against the wall. And I, and I kind of compare it to this because this is no different. My back is against the wall this fight. I'm the underdog. People don't think I can win this fight. A lot of people don't think I can win this fight. But it's nothing different than what I've seen. When you've gone through and you face death like I have, face to face, you're, you're fearful of nothing. If anything, you want it hard so that you can show yourself and show the world just how much you are, just just what you're willing to do and willing to sacrifice and willing to go through. And, and, and it shows your true character. And that's what I'm most proud of, being able to come back from all those different things. It's great to be able to accomplish your goals, but ultimately, the sacrifices that I've made and the person that I am today, it, it just, it's heartwarming to me because that whole ordeal scopes who I am as a man. I know not to bring up bad memories, but how was that experience that you said this day? How would you describe it? Man, it's, I can't really put it into words. I mean, when you you grow up as a child, you think you're Superman, you think you're a superhero, you're never gonna die, you're never gonna have any challenges like that. You're not gonna get old, you're never gonna get sick. At that very moment when I was kind of on my deathbed, that's when it struck me and I realized that I was human and I realized that I was no different from any other man. And that was one, one major crazy feeling, right? But it changed my perspective about life. It changed my perspective about what I do. It changed my perspective of giving everything my all. I used to take shortcuts as an amateur and as an early professional because I was just that good. Never used to run, want to run. My trainers used to always call me, had to get me up and do certain things. I do those things on my own now. If anything, I call my trainers like, where you guys at? Let's, <laughs> let's, let's get going. Because my mentality is different. So when you face things like that, you ultimately come out a totally different person. And have you faced that, if you're aware of, of Adrian Bronner, the cryptic message he put out to social media? It started a lot of people. People were worried about fans, his own, his own family. What can you tell A.J. Bronner about the situation? He seems to be in a very difficult place at this moment in his career. He still has to fight. You know, right. To well, see, Adrian Broner, what my advice to him was to be surround yourself with love 
Surround yourself with peace and people who care about you no matter what it is that you have. Uh, I'm not saying he has yes men unless I don't know his circle. I know him. I, yeah, I know he's a great guy deep down inside. Uh, I do think he's misunderstood. He, he does do things that it's kind of controversial, but at the end of the day, for him to be affected in the way he is, he just has to around himself around love. He has children. He has family. He, he's living for certain people, so he has to uh, he has to just you know understand the importance and, and, and surround himself and bask himself. Because when I was going through my challenges, I had the key, the critical key people that gives me love and gives me support, and that was my family. Training in Hunter's Gym. You'll see Amir Khan there. If you find Canelo, you get past Golovkin. Canelo's there for you. Would you talk to Amir Khan about an advancement? Just to pick his brain out of it too. I will pick anybody. See, I'm a student of the game. I'll pick anybody brand who I feel like I can learn off of. I'm not a guy who I can feel like I know everything. Uh, I've done a, I've done a fight before where I said my opponent said I have nothing to prove. There's nothing to prove. I, you know, he has everything to prove. And I, and I said to myself, the day a fighter start believing that he has things to prove or he's not a student of the game or there's nothing else to learn, it's probably the end of his career because the mentality is everything. And you know, my mentality is going to be to soak in as much knowledge as possible. Now you're you're training in Virgil Hunter's gym. You have the you have a chance. Uh -huh. To slay the second head of the dragon of HBO, how special yeah. would that be? Being that you're <laughs> I think that um, you know, for me, and just when you think about my story and all my trials and tribulations, I just think it's one of those picture perfect feel good stories. Everyone loves a feel good story. America loves a feel good stories, such as myself, and you know. I'm just astounded to see what I could accomplish and just to see the, the, the evolution of where I come from and what I've gone through to now. To win this fight will mark greatness. And, and knowing Al Heyman, knowing Sam Watson, they would not put you in this fight if they didn't know you, if they didn't believe you. Oh, absolutely. Well, I wouldn't ask for the fight <laughs> if I didn't believe it. Uh, and that's why I called him out after my last fight and I demanded that they make this fight happen. Obviously, it took a a little bit of time because we wanted to make sure the business part was right, but I'm finally happy this happened. Danny, uh, speaking of going to Virgil's gym, Andre Ward, Kovalev, put your analyst hat on, break down that fight, and, and what do you think of the whole Well, I was there, uh, and I'm a big Andre Ward fan. I like Kovalev, I'm a fan of the sport, so I appreciate both boxers, but I was rooting for Andre Ward, and I just seen greatness. I seen him face challenges, and I seen him overcome within that very instant. I mean, he got dropped, he got back up, and he kept fighting. And that's the definition of a true warrior. You know, and people talk about it's controversial. No, it was just a close fight. You know, in my opinion, I think the judges got it I, the same way I had it. Andre Ward won by a round. And uh, it's going to be a fight that he thought and he knew was going to be challenging. Same going for me and Triple G. I know the fight is going to be challenging, but I'm looking forward to if there's a tough hurdle that I have to jump over, getting over those hurdles with my team. What do you think about all the talk of Andre Ward talking Last about question, because i got to go, guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> talking about he's going to retire. because Andre know, what? Yeah. yeah. What's your take on that? I think he's done everything he could possibly do in the sport of boxing. I mean, he's accomplished from amateur to professional everything there is to accomplish. So if he wants to go out gracefully, I support him. Thank you so yeah, much. Thank you, guys. I appreciate you.